Good evening. It is Sunday, November 2nd, 2025. We have a lot to talk about in today's update with a chance of heavy snowfall for the Great Lakes, believe it or not. In the next week or so, we could be talking about some heavy lake effect snow because there's going to be a cold Arctic blast and outbreak that is going to come from Canada all the way into the Midwest and the Deep South as well. Going to bring in much colder temperatures to start out November. So in this update, we'll be breaking down all those details. Before we get to that though, it is pretty warm across the high plains, especially in Colorado where we have temperatures that are in the mid 80s for this afternoon and evening as the sun is beginning to set there. If we go across the deep south here, temperatures are very warm as well. We're talking again low to mid 70s for this time of the year. And of course, down here across the desert southwest like Phoenix and Arizona, temperatures are still in the 90s, believe it or not. So still feeling like summertime for some locations instead of where it should be this time of the year, where it should feel like fall. However, there is some fall-like weather that is taking place across Great Lakes with temperatures in the upper 40s to lower 50s of this given hour. And despite that, temperatures are running warmer than they were 24 hours ago, especially in the high plains here of Colorado, Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, as well as Texas, where temperatures are running 20 to 30 degrees warmer than they were just a day ago or 24 hours ago. But you don't have to travel too far to the northwest where temperatures are running much cooler than they were 24 hours ago. So like in Montana, temperatures are running 20 to 30 degrees cooler than they were 24 hours ago. If you're in Nebraska, if you are in Washington, Oregon, as well as Idaho, temperatures are running 10 to 15 degrees cooler than they were 24 hours ago. Not much changes in California, Nevada, as well as Arizona, where temperatures are pretty much where they were yesterday. But really, this is where we're seeing a lot of warm air advection due to the southerly flow in the lower levels, helping to transport that warmer air northward ahead of a cold front and a lower pressure system that is going to be uh, making things a little bit interesting. But to the south of this, this is where you are seeing temperatures that are definitely warmer than they were yesterday. So now on with that forecast with that big storm system that is coming by the early part of next week that looks to be pretty darn significant on all circumstances, especially for the Great Lakes where we have that colder air coming over the warm Great Lake waters. And we are going to end up with a lot of lake effect snow and some of it could be pretty substantial. So brace yourself for this forecast. So to start off, here's a look at the 500 millibar uh, wind flow chart here from the European model, and we can see northwesterly or west-northwesterly flow coming in across the United States. This is going to help to infiltrate some cooler air from higher latitudes into the Great Lakes region, into the Midwest, but it's really going to become pronounced as we go into the early part of next week here by the 8th and the 9th of November, where this trough really sets up here. You can see this big, big upper-level low-pressure system over Hudson Bay, and this is going to bring in some much colder air from higher latitudes. And this is going to really spin out of control. As you can see here, this is a very, very deep low pressure system by all circumstances over Michigan, over Wisconsin. Man, much of the Great Lakes are really going to get some much needed lake effect snow. And yeah, it's pretty early for this time of the year to see that. But yes, it occasionally happens. But we can see very strong north flow here helping to amplify this trough a little further and you can see how this really spins and pinwheels around itself as we go into early next week this would be in about say eight to nine days that's what the european model is showing here if we look at the gfs model here uh, rather quickly here you can see something pretty similar, but not as amplified as what the European model is showing here. And this is the 18Z GFS model, all thanks to um, our clocks to fall back one hour. All of these models are now out an, uh, an hour earlier, which is really nice. So I'm able to view the 18Z model run instead of the 12Z run that this would have not started rendering just yet. So this is really nice. But unfortunately, what's not nice about this model run is there is going to be, there's some agreement here that a big snowstorm is going to be developing over the Great Lakes potentially. 
So on to our precipitation type forecast here. And as we uh, move this forward, you can see the green color, excuse me, for the 18Z run. So the green colors indicate lots of rainfall, a light to moderate rainfall, blue shading indicates snowfall. So as we put this into motion, you can see really not much going on out there. A nice, a little bit of a passing weather system for the middle of this week over the Great Lakes. Going to bring in some light to moderate rainfall. Big storminess across the West, though, like Washington, Oregon, and California, where I'm at. We're going to get some very strong winds here, possibly damaging winds, and some thunderstorms and some heavy rainfall. We might have to stream that here on the YouTube channel if nothing else is going on. So something to look forward to. And then what's really going to happen here is that big storm that's going to really develop here. And it's not really so much a lot of rainfall here in the Midwest because this is more of a Canadian-type system, a land mass mass storm but what's going to happen is when this cooler air arrives and it moves over these lake waters it's going to squeeze out some lake effect snow and you'll see that here on the modeling look at this all this blue here on your screen indicates that there is going to be a lot of lake effect snow and as we zoom in you can see that really in place here and this is in about eight to nine days so there's a lot of room of variability here and a lot of room for change in the forecast but my goodness by the 10th of November here, we're looking at moderate to heavy lake effect snow here, maybe some blizzard conditions, some strong winds here across nor uh, much of Indiana, Michigan, as well as some of the other Great Lakes like Lake Erie, Lake Ontario. If you're in Pennsylvania, upstate New York, yes, your first taste of winter is finally coming after it had been so warm thus far in fall. And in fact, if we look at those temperature anomalies, you can just see how much cooler than average it is it's going to be yeah no wonder why the uh the pill no no i'm just trying to make up something here our lake effect snow lovers are going to complain about how cold it's going to be because uh, temperatures here are going to be anywhere between about 15 to 25 degrees below average potentially but this is again very far out and we have a lot of variability in the model but we're starting to think about some lake effect snow here especially if we look at our ensemble forecast from the euro painting a below average temperature picture here especially for again the northeastern u.s much of the eastern u.s as well with those temperatures are going to be significantly below average and again this is um, from an ensemble forecast from the euro so they're is some agreement here that some lake effect snow, some gusty wind, some colder temperatures will occur with the system. So you definitely need to be aware of this. It's even showing up here on our six to 10 day climate prediction center temperature probability outlook here, highlighting a below average risk of temperatures for the Northeast, for the Great Lakes, where there's a leaning chance for those below average temperatures, but definitely warm elsewhere, especially across the high plains, the desert Southwest. If you're in the Intermountain West, like California, the Pacific Northwest, not going to feel like winter just yet. That might actually happen by the time we go into the middle and the latter part of November where we get a pattern flip that's coming. And you can see that really shaping up here by the 8 to 14 day forecast where we do have some cooler than normal temperature chances possibly for the extreme northeast. Whereas the Midwest again, it's going to get warm yet again with those uh, 60 to 70 percent chances for those temperatures to be an above average and near average or equal chances across much of the extreme west coast here of California. California, Nevada, Oregon, Washington, as well as Idaho. Now, when it comes to a precipitation perspective here, it's going to be a warm and dry one, unfortunately, for the high plains and for the deep south here, where it's going to be drier than average, as you can see, with a 50 to 60 percent chance for below average rainfall or snowfall for these given areas. And that's really unfortunate. And even kind of nosing into Indiana, where my friend lives, as well as Ohio and Kentucky, near average to below average chances for precipitation there. And it looks like leaning above average for Indiana, as well as some parts there of the Great Lakes. However, for the southeastern United States and the Deep South, leaning below average in terms of precipitation. And then, of course, for much of the Intermountain West, like the Pacific Northwest and California, leaning above average with those chances for wetter weather. And before I do forget, you can see here how much snowfall you could see over the next 10 days, potentially, especially over Michigan, where that lake of 
affect snow could dump anywhere between 6 to 12 inches of snowfall across the coast there of Michigan, the east coast, that is, right in here where I've circled in black, and then more snow up here, as well as Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, where you might see around 6 to 12 inches of snowfall. But of course, there's a lot of variability in the deterministic modeling from the European model, and when we, t again, take a look at the European ensemble forecast, you can see anywhere between about an inch to three inches forecasted here over the course of eight to 10 days. So right now there's pretty low confidence, but hey, it could be a big storm if it actually develops, especially with the colder air that's coming in out of the north. But anyways, if you did find today's weather forecast very helpful, detailed, informative, and life-saving, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, folks. It really, really helps out a lot. I'm gonna stay up to date with you all with this upcoming winter storm, potentially for the Great Lakes, and also for what's going on across the western half of the United States with that atmospheric river with flood potential that is going to be increasing. So make sure you do subscribe if you haven't already and enable all notifications here on the YouTube channel so you stay up to date here on the YouTube channel with any wild weather that is coming up for this fall and of course for the winter season. I will have you covered all season long here on the YouTube channel as well as hit the like button and share this video with your family and friends on social media and please leave a comment too to let me know what your thoughts are with that snow for the Great Lakes and also for what is going to be happening across much of California, Oregon, Washington over the next several days.